Hello there. Welcome back. This is episode 38 at Streets and Eats. And on this episode, we're introducing kind of a new a new topic here. It's called 50 States, 50 Weekends. And the idea is that, you know, there's so much to do in the United States. And so many people want to be able to say they've been to all 50 states. And that's not hard to do, depending on what you count. But for us, we're saying to be able to say that you've been to a state, you should have spent a weekend there. So we're going to scour the United States and find the best places to spend a weekend. And today we're talking about San Diego. Welcome to Streets and Eats, the travel and food podcast dedicated to taking our listeners to the sights, sounds, and flavors of fascinating places near and far, both on and off the beaten path. We're Jim and Corinne Vale, and we've been traveling internationally and domestically together for decades, visiting more than 90 countries in all 50 states in the USA. We'll share all of the local knowledge and food expertise we've gathered through years of living as expats in Asia and Europe, as well as traveling with families spanning multiple generations around the world. Join us each week for a new adventure. Yeah, we were just in San Diego. Um, we did a little trip down to California to basically see flowers because Southern California in springtime is absolutely stunning. All of California in springtime is stunning. And even though California can get very brown very quickly, and it was even turning brown as we were heading back, mm. um, you know, there you can still find a lot of beauty in it. But the flowers we saw poppies galore it was just beautiful and we were also in joshua tree too um and the joshua trees were blooming so i think we had a very successful spring into spring with the california flowers it was so much fun and then what did we come back to yeah the cold not just <laughs> Actually, cold. It was snowing today yeah in mid-april uh, and not just a little bit of snow flurries, but I mean, it was coming down. It makes you remember what, what you're in for in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, and we love it, but it's also nice now to be thinking about those warm days in San Diego that we had. Well, let me tell you first a little bit about our idea behind 50 States, 50 weekends, 50 States. And is a, pretty big number. And not only is it a big number, but we are a huge country. We cover so much ground in the United States, so many different <laughs> ecosystems, so many different um, things to see, so many different cultures. Right. It's just such a, we're so lucky to live in a country with so much diversity and so much um, differences just between one state and another. So Jim and I, I have always spent a lot of time traveling in the U.S., even when we didn't live in the U.S. Um, we would come home for summers and um, mostly summers and try and do as much as we could uh, during that time. So 50 states, 50 weekends doesn't mean that every weekend you go to a new state. Oh God. We'd Nobody never... could afford that. <laughs> <laughs> and you just couldn't have time for it. You never recover from you... one weekend to the next. That's right. What we think is more doable is like 50 states over at 50 weekends that are spread over maybe say five years. It doesn't have to be five years. It just basically is take an account of how many states you've been to. And I would be very specific about what I counted. For example, um, prior to last summer, I had been to North Dakota. Jim and I made a specific effort to go to North Dakota. And we spent the night there and we did a few things and, you know, we could count it. But did I really feel like I knew North Dakota? No. So if I were evaluating whether or not um, I had been to North Dakota, I could check yes, but maybe I want to go back and give it another try. And so I would check no. That's entirely up to you. Maybe you could have a yes list and a no list. And then after you do the no's, maybe make sure you go back and do some of those yeses that you want to redo or just get some more of because we have such wonderful things. Just because we say 50 states and you're going to one city or one place in that state to do the challenge doesn't mean that there's not 
multiple things to see in that state that are well worth your time and effort. Um, even the smaller states, it's, it's surprising how much we can pack into a state. It really is. Yeah. And once you've done the 50 weekends that, or once we've done the 50 weekends that we are coming up with, you know, then it's time to turn around and pick another 50 weekends and pick a different spot in the state to go to and, and just keep traveling that way and, and keep checking it out and keep the challenge going. Uh, like you said, there is so much diversity to celebrate and the best way to do that is to get there and do it. We used to say, we used to count states or places that we've been uh, based on whether we've had a meal there. And that's really, I think like the the bare bare minimum. minimum. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So (laughs) it's like we're one mind. (laughs) (laughs) Well, after almost 40 years of marriage, you can kind of understand why before we really get started. Uh, We really would like you to be vocal in what you've done in different parts of the country and where you've spent a weekend, two or three days, and what you suggest people do. So we have a private Facebook group called 50 States, 50 Weekends, and we'd love for you to join. And we'd love for you to start adding information, as we will, about where we think you should go and what you should do there. So please take a look at that. I'll put a link in the show notes. And now uh, we're going to tell you about some of the things we think are important in a weekend. And when we say weekend, it really is two to three days, depending on when you're off. It doesn't have to be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's just when most people think about traveling. Actually, if you can work it out where you're doing it in the middle of the week, you're probably going to get better prices. Yeah, in most so. places, you'll be better off. That's right. <laughs> so it's up to you what days you pick. So we say weekends, but we really mean just a couple of days. So what we're looking at here is uh, not necessarily trying to avoid any place, but trying to highlight and get to those places that are maybe not the first choice. Like, uh, like for instance, in California. Los Angeles is the largest city. There's a lot to do there. It's a great place to go. But we are looking at getting somewhere a little bit further out. So we're looking at second cities and capital cities, uh, that sort of thing. But they still have to be well-connected. You have to be able to easily get to it. Uh, So transportation into the area is going to be the key. Should be a place that has a decent airport or is not far from the main airport. And that airport should be well connected to the rest of the States. Uh, We're not looking at having to make hops of two or three uh, different connections to get to a destination as much as possible. We want to avoid that. As much as possible, but there are some places that are worth it. So that's right. I'm sure we'll break that rule occasionally, but we'll try not to. How's that? (laughs) That's right. Uh, and, uh, I, I talk about the capital cities mainly because that's where you're going to find a lot of the, the real history of the state uh, in museums and, uh, in the architecture and everything else. And they're not usually, uh, I'm trying to think if there's any of them that the are the biggest cities. cities. Are not usually the biggest cities or even the second biggest cities. Yeah. They're usually pretty small. And what I found when going to Capitol buildings in a state is that they have some fantastic stories that I never heard before. Things like when I was in Oklahoma City, um, there was, and it's not the the capital. What's the capital of Oklahoma? Maybe it is the capital, but it was the second capital. I can't remember the yeah, story remember. now, but there was something about stealing <laughs> the Capitol papers and just like we're talking theft and it's just really fun old West type stuff that I just would never associate with the capital city. So it was just really, really cool. I think it's well worth going in there. Usually when you tour a Capitol building, they're free, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. you know what? San Diego is not a capital. So let's, let's move off of that. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good point. Well, so we're for California, we were kind of going back and forth. Should it be Sacramento? Should it be the second city? Uh, So I'll tell you why I wanted to go to Sacramento. I mean, to San Diego, you guys. I have always heard about how wonderful San Diego Zoo is. Yeah. And I have wanted to go to San Diego Zoo really. 
I mean, I can't even tell you how long for years and years and years and years and years. But San Diego was always just that much further than we were going. It was just that much harder to get to. So Jim and I were like, heck, let's just fly there. Let's just do it. And we did. Yep. And, you know, one of the things they say about San Diego is it's America's nicest city. Uh, It's a beautiful city. It's got miles of beaches. It's got very temperate weather, especially considering that it's in Southern California. Uh, But being right on the water there really helps keep the temperatures down in the summer and keeps it mild all winter long. So with the zoo and with a lot of the other attractions, uh, yeah, that's what we decided on. And so we got to looking at it. It has a great airport. uh, And it's one of those old airports that got its start, you know, in the heyday of aviation in the early 20s and 30s. And so it's right near the downtown area. And that's not very common in a lot of places. In fact, you don't really want your airport right downtown. Typically you don't. But it is convenient. Yeah. And I have to say, for people flying into the city, it's a pretty it's a pretty interesting approach seeing the city buildings and uh and just flying into the city like that. It's very cool. I I really like that. Um San Jose is a lot like that too where you're just kind of flying in between buildings to the, to the runway. I think it's probably pretty challenging for the pilots, uh, but there's never been any incidents that I'm aware of. And like I said, it's a let's, really cool approach. Let's keep it that way. Yeah. So, that so way. getting there, it has a good airport. Um, it's on the Alaska route. It's on the United route. Southwest. So, Delta. Yeah. There's plenty of people who fly in there. I'm sure you can get a uh, connection to San Diego without much problem at all. Definitely. Um, the next thing is getting around. Do you need to run a car or is public transportation going to cut it? Running a car can run you, you know, what, $40, $50 a day. Minimum, yeah. Um, and Or up, depending on what kind of car you want. Uh, in places like California, maybe you want to make sure you have that good air conditioning or whatever. But there's a lot to do right in the city there. So, And there's a lot of public transportation. I probably would not rent a car. We didn't. Um, ha- we did have a car when we were in San Diego because, like I said, we went to um, some national parks and stuff too. So we were there just for a couple of days and then we moved on, which you can also do. I mean, it's entirely up to you. Um, But for San Diego, it was so easy to drive around and we never had problems with parking. Many large cities, you have so many issues with parking. I didn't think the parking was that expensive. Um, We were right downtown in the Gaslight district and we had to make two circles and we, but we found, um, a parking space no problem Image right where we were trying to go yeah so and that would have been the hardest place for parking i would think so yeah and um, we really didn't have any problems at all and there was with by all the sites and stuff that we did there was plenty of parking and a lot of it was free yeah yes some we had to pay for it but a lot of it was already free so it just it was nice having a car but it wasn't necessary they do have well they have a really good bus system and uh, the metro system there is is pretty is pretty well designed. It covers the whole city and in fact, pretty far out of the city and it's affordable. Uh, I think it's like $2 and 50 cents for a ticket, or you can get a, a one day pass, which I think is around $6. And so right there, if you're going to ride any of the transportation at least three times, you know, you're saving money anytime after that. And the buses will take you everywhere. That's one of the things I really like about San Diego too, is that it, while it's the second largest city in California and it's a pretty good size, really it's pretty compact and it's got one of those old quarters downtown, the gas quarter, the gas gas light quarter. quarter. Um, And so it kind of built up around there And so with few exceptions, most of your attractions and most of the things you're going to want to do are all within a a fairly small part of the city. So yeah, getting around with public transportation is really doable. And having that airport uh, so close to the city means that you're not going to spend a lot of time once you get off your plane trying to schlep your way into the city. 
uh, or trying to decide whether you should stay near the airport to save that time or in in the city itself. Uh, so that's really a, a good benefit of having the, that airport close. Uh, um, they also have uh, the red trolley, which goes has lines all downtown. And again, you can get a pass on it. Um, it goes has three different lines and it goes just about anywhere that you might want to go. So even getting a hotel on the red trolley line is a great idea. And that way you can pretty, keep, pretty well keep central. Um, but they do have things if you want to take a little bit of a, a you know, a jaunt outwards a little bit out of the city or on the out, outskirts. They have th- three different train lines. They have the coaster, the sprinter, and the Pacific Surfliner. And all of these have different things that they highlight and are great ideas. They each have their own website, which we'll put the show notes. Um, but check those out in case you're interested in doing them. It's, they're good for things like um, going to the beaches and, and that kind of stuff. And, you know, it, like any place else, you can always get a taxi or Uber or something. Yeah, any of those share rides. Those share ride type things. So we like we really limit how much we use those, but a lot of times we'll use them um, purposefully after we have dinner because mm-hmm. we want to make sure that we can have a nice cocktail with dinner or we go to happy hour and then go to dinner or whatever. Um, so th- we're always thinking about that kind of stuff too, because we don't want to get in trouble. We just want to have fun. That's right. We just want to have fun. Um, and be responsible doing it. That's right. And really get a chance to enjoy everything that the city has to offer. Now, mostly with uh, 50 States, 50 weekends, we are talking about uh, two adults doing things, but we will put in some stuff that is kid friendly um, as well, in case what your companion that you're traveling with is a child, we love to travel with children. So we just mm. don't get to do it as much anymore as we used to. That's right. Maybe we'll get to do it more. But, but we're right also now, still kind of kids at heart. So and we, that's true. We actually enjoy doing a lot <laughs> well, of those like kid I said, things. I wanted to go to the zoo, that's and right. we didn't have any kids with us. We went to the zoo. Yeah. Which is moving into our next. Yeah. Um, Let's talk about the attractions. Yeah. The uh, San Diego's attractions. I consider it the number one attraction just because it's something I had wanted to do for so long. I'd have to agree with you. Um, that San Diego Zoo, I have to say, I, I you know, I kind of have mixed feelings about, about zoos, zoos in, general. in general. Yeah. Um, the morality of it all. But if you're going to have it, and let's face it, for most people, they don't, they're not going to get any opportunity to see animals live in something even close to their natural habitat. Uh, and that's kind of what zoos are there for, a way for us to study animals and observe them. And the best ones, I think, do do, do do, do a great job of putting the animals in as close to their natural habitat as possible. And the San Diego zoo, I think hands down for me anyway, is probably the winner in that regards. Uh, just all the different habitats that they do have for their animals are they're spacious. Uh, they've gone to such great lengths to incorporate natural uh, plants. Yeah. And just to make the animals feel like they're where they belong. And for the, for the people observing that you really get a sense of where the animal is coming from and their whole ecosystem and their habitat. Yeah. So I really like that. Plus plus they have great placards and information. They have different ways that you can get around the zoo. Um, They have plenty of cafes. I mean, it is a huge place. And I mean, there was a gondola, there was a bus, there was, um, I mean, of course you could walk, you could take tours around and have someone, um, taking you behind the scenes. I mean, there was just so many options that it was a bit overwhelming, it but really it was be. really, really fun. You really do want to get the map and make a plan. Make sure you understand uh, or know when the different shows that you're interested in and when the different animals, animal feedings are going to take place. Uh, it's pretty well posted on their website or at the zoo itself. Uh, and, and so you have a good idea of what the schedule is going to look like while you're at the zoo. So you don't miss any of that important stuff. So one of the things we did, and we strongly suggest that you do this as well, is as soon as you go in, you kind of hightail it to the double decker bus loading. 
And when we got there, I think we had one bus that we waited in line for. So we only waited in line, I don't know, 10 minutes, I think. Very short time. And we got on the top of a double-decker bus and we took the whole thing first because we were just getting a orientation around the entire zoo. It was a great way to see it. If you had limited uh, mobility or the heat gets to you, just climb back up on that double-decker bus. I mean, it is fantastic. We loved them. I think that you see things and animals from the bus that you're not really going to see any other way because you're sitting up so high and you're above a lot of the vegetation and you can, uh, and you're going along a path that is not for pedestrians. It's not for people walking through the zoo. So you get a different view. And like you said, it goes all the way around the zoo. Um, was it like a 30 minute loop? I think, I don't know, but something it, like that. Yeah. Um, and you can get on and off. Of yeah. Course. It stops along the way where you can get on or off. Uh, so like we were coming down one area and we went right past the hippopotamus uh, enclosure and they were out and they were being really active. So we were like, okay, <laughs> let's get off. So we jumped off the bus and hightailed it, hightailed down it back. But of course, by the time we got back there, they were asleep. They were asleep. So <laughs> it was hilarious. And but we're, if we hadn't we're talking, been, we're talking 20 minutes. I mean, my gosh. Yeah. But if we hadn't seen them from the bus and the bus does a good job, the drivers do a good job of stopping uh, when there is an interesting thing to see, giving everybody plenty of time to see it uh, and giving a narration about it the whole time. So you, you, you know what's happening and what you're looking at. It's pretty cool. Uh, Yeah. San Diego zoo, I think is uh, like you said, that's really what tipped the balance for us for, for going to San Diego. And so that was our number one. Yeah. And right next door to San Diego Zoo is Balboa well, Park. It's all in the same park. Yeah. It's beautiful. Beautiful. It's very lush. It's well maintained. There's beautiful flowers everywhere. The architecture is amazing. Spanish colonial, you know, things that you can walk through and the fountains. I mean, it's it's just well worth it. There's always something going on there too. So. Uh, and that's where all the main museums are. So uh, if you are looking for a museum, chances are pretty high that whether you go to the zoo or not, you're going to be going to Balboa Park. Uh, probably the most popular museum in San Diego is the natural, the San Diego Natural History Museum. They call it the Nat. Uh, and, and I'm always a sucker for a natural history museum. So that's our likes for zoos too. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it's uh, the same thing. But they also have a science center with a lot of really cool hands-on science exhibits for uh, that are going to interest not just kids but adults too. Uh, and the one I was really excited to hear about, uh, but wasn't open yet, is a Comic Con museum that's going to be opening soon. I mean, how fun would that be, right? Yeah. So, I mean, you can do them both on the same day or you can do them on different days. It's up to you. Um, But they're both, I mean, that whole area is just really worth spending a lot of time in as much time as you're willing to give it, actually. And it's not so far from the city that, like you said, uh, if you want to do the zoo one day and then walk around the park and go to a museum or two the next day, you could easily do that combined with... um, a lot of the other things that we're going to talk about or pack them all in and spend half a day at Balboa park doing the zoo and a museum, but just take a look at the website. And uh, so you have an idea of what museums you're interested in I think there's like 17 or 18 museums. Oh, there's tons of museums. They cover all kinds of interests. I have, yeah, I have actually a list a little bit lower down some of the ones that I was interested in, but I didn't even list them all because there's so much to do. And um, they have, but they do have a good website for indoor museums that I'll put the link in here. So you can check that out. So here's the thing about San Diego. San Diego 
is in California. So you expect it to be really warm and inviting with lots of outdoor active activities. And I agree with them a hundred percent. Um, but there's, but there's also lots of indoor things to do. So the couple of days we were there were actually kind of chilly. It was nice during the day and we got some sun and, you know, we were able to sort of wear a uh, fleece and be very, very comfortable. But it wasn't really, you know, go out on the water activities other than taking the the harbor cruise, which we did. And we'll talk about that in a minute. But my point is, San Diego has it all. Whether you have if you want to really go outdoorsy and do all that kind of stuff or if you want to just stay indoors and do museums and um, history things and and find out about the Navy and stuff. There's plenty of that, too. Plenty. Oh, yeah. So I think um, most people are going to head to San Diego Harbor because that's such a cool place. And I think maybe getting a hotel by, down there is a great idea because, oh yeah, it, I mean, there or the Gaslight District, because that's where there's restaurants and there's good views and there's just, it's just really fun. And either one, whether you're right in the... Gaslight Quarter or on the harbor, you're not far from the other one. Right. Because they're right there. So, yeah, that's probably the best place, I think. Uh, you're close to all the transportation options, and it's just cool to be right there on the water. Yeah. San Diego Harbor is my second favorite part of San Diego. Well, that USS Midway, if you are interested in aircraft carriers, you have got to go on the USS Midway. Yeah. It well, is amazing it's incredible and the aircraft that they have on board and you can climb aboard a lot of the aircraft and through the helicopters you can try out the flight simulators uh, I, I think you could easily spend an, a day just wandering through the aircraft carrier through the midway um, well i know our grandson could yeah get <laughs> lost in there quite easily um but most people are going to spend, I guess, probably about two An hour, hours. Two hours, yeah. Yeah, and and that's a really good thing to combine with a harbor, a harbor cruise. cruise because it's right at the same place where you're going to be getting on the the ship for the cruise or a whale watching cruise or a whale watching cruise. Uh, and because of its location, uh, it's right on the the migration path for the whales heading to Mexico or up to Alaska. And it's pretty good chances almost all year long that you're going to see whales out of San Diego. So that is a good place for for a whale watching cruise. Uh, the harbor cruises are about, what, they're one hour or two hours? They weren't very long. They're not very long. They weren't very expensive. Um, and we did... Did we do both sides of it? We did, the two we, did, we did both sides. Yeah, we did both sides of it, but you could only do one end of it or the other if you want to as well. Right. Um, and there's a lot of Navy information um, and history of the city. For me, the narration is secondary. I just love being out on the water and seeing the city from a different perspective yeah. and really just kind of enjoying the ride. Well, I like that too, but I've got to say being able to go past the, the Navy uh, shipyards and seeing all those ships in different states of either repair or just being serviced, getting ready for the next cruise. I, I've never seen that variety of ships anywhere in the world. So that was super cool for me. I really enjoyed that part. We're nerds that way. <laughs> yeah. One thing that I was surprised about was on the naval base, which is high over the city is Point Loma and the Cabrillo National Monument. That was something I had never heard about before. Cabrillo was an explorer and his background is kind of shady. And, you know, being a national monument, just like every national park, they have a visitor center with an exhibit. There's a lighthouse out there. And the part of the base that you can go on takes you down to a beach and some beautiful tide pools. We saw some, we watched the pelicans for a good 15 minutes diving and eating um, while we were there. Uh, the tide was in, so we didn't get to do the tide pulling, but we did go down there and see them. It was incredible. Yeah, just that, a beautiful that place. Point Loma is just beautiful. Uh, and the lighthouse is pretty cool too. I really enjoyed that. Uh, but I agree. I think the best part for me was 
being down again at, at the water by the tide pools and just watching those pelicans flying around. That was super cool. Well, and what I also liked about it, like I said, it's, it's Navy based property, but anybody can visit. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of a unique national park or national, national uh, monument, monument, I guess, mm-hmm. uh, in that you're, you have to drive through an active part of the base to get to it, which is kind of interesting. Uh, but anybody can visit. So if you are visiting and you get to a gate, don't be scared. Don't turn around. Just pull up and say hi and tell them what you're doing. And if you're going the wrong way, they'll, they'll point you in the right direction. Sometimes they don't even man the gate. So if that's the case, when you go, you can just go right through. Yeah, and you know, you're going the right way, but it can get really crowded there. And yes. because it is such a, a tight entry, as far as driving goes one way in one way out, um, when it's crowded, you can really get stuck in traffic there for a while. So probably the best time I think for visiting is in the early morning or later in the afternoon, uh, just, After bef- the just before the visitor center closes, but when the crowds are kind of leaving. But and the problem with it is if you want to go to the beach or the tide pools, it's going to take you a few hours. So you want to really have the time plan on spending yeah. the time to go there if that's what you're going to do. And remember the tide pools are based on the tides. So you're going to have to do that little bit of research uh, when you're going to find out when low tide is, because of course it's not always at the same time. In fact, it's Every never day. at the same time. <laughs> okay. So um, speaking about tide pooling, that's one of the outdoor activities you could do. There are so many things that you can do in San Diego. I mean, it's California there. You can take surf lessons. You can go hang gliding. You can um, go to go on a couple of really cool hikes. One that's pretty rough is uh, potato chip rock. But the Instagram boy would be so happy if you had that photo. Let me tell you, because that's a really cool rock that you get to be up there. Yeah. Torrey Pine State Reserve has also got beautiful vistas. Uh, but I like the idea, and we'll have to try and get there at the right time of year for this, of snorkeling with the leopard sharks. Yeah, I think so, too. But the other thing that I wanted to do, and we did not get to do this. Um, one of my goals is to, to kayak in as many places as possible, and yet I haven't. I haven't really realized this yet. So it's still a goal. Um, and they have this really cool place called the La Jolla Sea Caves that I want to mm. go kayaking in. Um, there's, I, I just think it looks incredible. We did not get to do that, but it's on my list. Yeah, And of course, just going to the beach, there's miles and miles of white sand beaches, Coronado, Central Beach, Ocean Beach, Mission Beach, La Jolla. Uh, there's so many to choose from. That's right. And the same thing goes with bike um, bike paths. Um, you can rent a bike there and either a regular bike or an electric bike. You can take a Segway tour. You can um, see quite a bit of things by going along the bike. And one really nice bike ride is um, going down Coronado Beach because you can take your bike on the ferry and then drive, you know, ride it all the way up and down the beach. So it's really, really pretty. Um, so there's tons to do if you're an outdoor person and, you know, cities really aren't your things. I think San Diego kind of works for you as well. Um, what I would do if I just want, I mean, you can easily spend two or three days just doing out, out, outdoor activities and then going to the gas lamp quarter at night and having dinner and maybe going to a comedy club or a music show or something. So, I mean, that would be your weekend right there. Right. But, if you are more eclectic like Jim and I, we like to do a little bit of outdoor, a little bit of indoor. We love history and we love we love the military history, especially. And we just I don't know. We're we're very eclectic. We like museums. We do. Um, we are not big museum goers in right. that. You know, we're not going to go to museum after museum after museum. No, I tend to burn out after. Yeah. After one museum per day, really. Yeah, we well that's our that's always been our goal is never to have more than one museum per day. And that doesn't mean we do a museum per day. It just means that we're not going to get caught up in all the cool things that you can do that are museums and we're going to spend our time doing that. And now I suppose if it was raining the whole time or something maybe we would right um change our minds. But I I I tend to doubt it. <laughs> yeah. Well, and there's so many other indoor activities that you can do, you know, ice skating, wall climbing, bowling, 
All like they have some luxury bowling that sounds really, really cool. And uh, ice skating, that's always fun. I love skating. I'm not a wall climber, though, so I'm, you're not going to get me doing that. Yeah. And uh, would you put an aquarium in the same boat? Like, like, would you do a museum one day, a museum and an aquarium the next day? Or Well, the thing think? about aquariums, I love aquariums, but I think they tend to all be similar. Right. Um, so they're not something I'm going to seek out as much unless I have kids with me because you just can't go wrong with an aquarium. No. This is what you do. You take your kids on something that you're interested in and then you start to wear them out a little bit. You feed them and you take them to the aquarium and that with the dark lighting and the really cool light of fishes and just the way you, you know it's so calming with the water and everything you take them back boy they're taking a nap or going to bed so easily that night <laughs> it's just a great trick yeah i agree okay well so you've worn yourself out doing all these different activities but we haven't really talked about eating yet and i gotta tell you san diego uh, well, first of all, it's known for a few different things. Well, I don't think fish tacos actually got their start in San Diego. I think that they they were kind of invented, if you want to call it that, uh, more like in, in Baja, California, just down the road. But I, uh, I got to say, San Diego has really embraced fish tacos as one of their own. So you can find some excellent fish tacos all through the city. Wait, Cal- so many different kinds of fish. Yeah. Lots of options um, and all tasty. Of course, California burritos originated in San Diego, uh, which is basically carne asada fries, another San Diego treat, uh, but in a tortilla. Of on a plate, it's shoved into a tortilla and wrapped up into a burrito. Uh, of course, 60% of the avocados are grown in the San Diego area. And so avocado toast is another great dish there. So don't leave San Diego without having your avocado toast there. That's right. It's not not usually one of our first choices for breakfast. However, it is delicious. It really and is. It is delicious in San Diego where they're super fresh. Um, but I have to say probably my most favorite meal uh, was at probably one of the least least pretentious yes places las cuatro milpas uh it is it really is the quintessential hole in the wall it's a mexican eatery it's not i wouldn't even really call it a restaurant no you stand in line outside and walk in to the building and there are several elderly women uh Cooking Who are all business. and serving, and you just kind of walk down the line. If you want tamales, you're going to get them from the first person. If you want tacos, you're going to give the order to the second person, and then the person behind them is going to cook them up right on the on the grill for you. Put them on the plate, and then you pay at the end, and then out the door you go. The only problem with Las Cuatro Milpas is it wasn't right downtown. Uh, we had a car, so it was easy for us to get there, but it was more on the side of town where. Um, there's, it's more like the Latin quarter or whatever. It's not hard to get to. It's just a right. little bit, you have to keep that in mind when you're going there. Yeah. You're not going to walk to it from the, from the gas right. quarter. For Unlike instance. Hodad's, which I think many people go to Hodad's. It's I, oh, yeah. Instagram worthy. I, I think it's on lots of, lots of people's do, to do list. And it's quite the eclectic burger joint. Uh, we were there. We had to have our burgers and shakes and you know, they were great. Well, you know, they claim to have the best burger in the world. And I have to say, other than the burgers that I make, (laughs) which I I don't know, even actually, they're probably better than mine. Uh, Yeah, that is one of the best burgers I've ever had. And they make the shakes. Remember those old, uh, I guess they're stainless steel Mm -hmm. cups that go on the, the shake mixer. And you kind of stick up, you, you put your stuff in the, the, in the metal, metal cup. cup and then you pull it up to get it to, you know, you push it up to get it to pop it onto the thing blend. And, and it blends all up. And then th- they take that off and they pour it into the glass and in the really good old diners, they give you the metal cup places, too. Yeah. You'd get 
both the glass with the shake in it and then the cup with the part that the metal cup with the parts that didn't fit in the glass. Uh, so they do that there. And I really love that. It's like a blast from the past. And of course, who doesn't want that extra shake? Uh, because, uh, you know, you want most you of your it. money. <laughs> <laughs> and plus, you need the calories to keep going for the rest of the day. Uh, we were surprised. We always like to see if we can find a good Turkish restaurant. And right down in the Gaslight District, we did find one. It was really, really good. Mm-hmm. Um, very authentic. And, and you know, we love that kind of thing. Yeah. San Diego is so. just packed full of great chefs and great restaurants and great food. Ethnic, American, New American, Mexican, you you name it. They've got it. I would say that it's a foodie destination. The problem with that can be, and we ran into this one time, and I'm not even going to tell you the name of the restaurant because I don't like to bash places, but Mm. we did go to a breakfast joint that was highly recommended. And for two people, it was going to cost us $60, which is above our budget. That's not even including... Uh, the cocktails. So we bypassed the cocktails. If we had each had a cocktail with our breakfast, we would be spending 80 to a hundred dollars for breakfast, which I just think is outrageous. And the portions were humongous. Well, the problem with that is who can eat that much? Yeah. And so, so you could share a dish, but the problem with that is that you both have to agree on the same dish. Uh, and uh, who wants to do that? Now, if you've got a group of four or five people and you want to just go and get two or three different dishes and just hang out and have a good time, it would probably be okay for that. But yeah, I have to agree with you. Um, we had some great food in San Diego, but that particular restaurant wasn't my favorite. Yeah. And so I would just check the reviews, make sure it's something that you're really interested in. Mm-hmm. And especially if you're traveling on a budget, maybe stay away from some of those kind of ones that are going to break the bank. I mean, I don't want to spend a hundred dollars on breakfast. I've got a whole day to spend a hundred dollars on. Um, but that's me. Um, one thing that we didn't do that I would do if I went back, you know, that's the problem with only going for a couple of days. You just cannot fit it all in. You really can't. Um, but we try, Jim and I try to find all the things to do a, so that we can wish that we had done them. Uh, not really. And B, so that we can tell you about them. But anyway, is the Liberty Station Public Market. And of course, it's one of those um, kind of hipster food places that you can get all kinds of different things to try from uh, bakery to ice cream. So or in everything in between hamburgers, pizzas, Italian food, all kinds of stuff. Um, and those are always fun. I think they're always worth a stop if you have time. Anything else on food, Jim? Well, n- not really, but San Diego is really well known for its beer. Oh, uh, yeah. Local breweries, microbreweries, craft beer, all that good stuff. Uh, I and, can't believe how many breweries were there. And one of the festivals that you can go to is a, a craft beer week where all week long you can go to different venues and try out the different craft beers. Uh, they also have a restaurant week to where you can get discounted uh, tastes of food from the different restaurants. That's really cool. Uh, so one thing to keep in mind when you are planning a trip is to check out the festival, check out a festival calendar, uh, the event and, calendar. And of course they've got anything and everything you can imagine for festivals in San Diego. Of course, you know, there's Cinco de Mayo in the old town. Uh, there's uh Shakespeare in the Shakespeare in the park at Balboa Park at the old Globe Theater. Uh, there's St. Patrick's Day in the Gaslight Quarter, and probably the most quirky of all, the Avocado Festival. Yeah, of course. That that would be one that I would want to go to. Me too. Uh, and and just check out the event calendars and see what's going on. There's probably going to be a film festival or a music festival of some sort going on. Uh, so definitely have an idea of when you're going and see what's happening because that's going to make a big difference on where you're spending your time. Exactly. Um, But I always think of festivals is a perfect time to visit a city anyway, because mm -hmm. it's just, everybody's happy and there's things to do and um, you can still do everything else. And they're usually not quite as packed. (laughs) So it kind of works in your favor both ways, you know? Yeah. And you can really get a, a better taste of the culture of the city that way. Yeah. So I agree. 
Uh, one thing you can do that's going to help with costs is to get a Go City Pass. And, you know, most cities around the world have some sort of uh, tourist pass that you can get that's going to give you either a discounted entry into a lot of different attractions, uh, maybe free transportation on hop on hop off buses uh, for for one price you get the card uh, and in San Diego they do have a go city pass which you can get in other cities too um, and this one actually gives you the entry skip the line entry to the zoo the uh, midway and so many other attractions in the city that it, uh, you know I'm usually more of a person that's going to pick and choose and try to figure out if uh, it's going to be cheaper to do individual tickets or if the city pass is a better way to go and looking at the go city pass, not to make this a commercial or anything. uh, It really does seem like a good way to save some money. Well, and and I think it's easier. It's it's, uh, skipping the line is always great, but I also think it's easier to budget. So if you are planning on, you know, say $500 for this weekend, then you know for transportation and entry, you're going to spend X amount. So I think that always makes it different. I think that way for tours altogether, like if you're going to do some of those outdoor activities where you need to rent uh, equipment or, or whatever, sometimes it's easier just to go ahead and book it as a tour like the kayaking to La Jolla Sea Caves, right. because then it includes your transportation. It includes your equipment. They'll set and, you up the equipment and everything. And you know, it's going to be safe. Yeah. And you don't waste a lot of time. So that's yeah. really good. So I always, I good always advice. think that's a really good way to do it. Um, plus you can budget it ahead of time because you've already paid for it. So that's one of my like tips that I like to make sure that you are aware of. All right. Well, I got to tell you, San Diego surprised me. I, did find it to be different than other California cities that I've been to. Mm -hmm. I really, really enjoyed it. And we only spent, I I guess we were there two and a half days, you know, just like a weekend amount of time. And I would say it wasn't really enough to see the whole city. What it was enough for me to enjoy it. It's definitely, if I hadn't been to California on other examples, it would be definitely enough for me to count it as a state visit. Right. But, um, but, the, but you did get a good, really good taste of the city and the culture and the history uh, in that two and a half days. And I really got to enjoy the zoo. It was so much fun. Uh huh. All right. Thanks for listening to this episode of Streets and Eats. If you liked what you heard, please show us some love, hit the like button, and leave us a review. Maybe even subscribe so you don't miss any future podcasts. Also, we'd love it if you joined us on our Facebook private group, Streets Needs, where we just have an ongoing conversation about all things travel. Ciao for now.